Hi everybody, this is Paul from Ad Espresso here and welcome to our monthly webinar. This time we're going to be covering how to maximise your Facebook ad results during the holiday season. Um, so just before we start digging into things, um, we are going to be recording. So as you've signed up for this webinar, we're going to be emailing that recording out to you probably about an hour or so after the webinar there. And also, we really want to go and answer any questions that you have at the end. Uh, my colleague, our general manager, Massimo, our CEO and founder, is going to be jumping in at the end as well. So any questions that you've got, please can submit them there. Um, also, just let us know if you can hear my audio OK. Just let us know where you're joining in from, because um, then we can customize this webinar as we go along for you there. So a little bit about myself, I'll keep it quite brief. I'm Paul, I'm the head of education at Ad Espresso. So what I do is I work with Facebook ads all day long. Um, I actually go and um, run ads for selected clients. So I probably spend a million or two a year on uh, Facebook ads there. I also do coaching, I also do uh, campaign reviews. So what we're gonna give you in this webinar is the actual strategies that work there, not just the theory there. Uh, hi, I can see you've got Michael there coming from Fort Worth. We've got Umid from Spain. Uh, I'll see from, I hope I got that right, from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Skip there from Lancaster, Pennsylvania as well. So uh, thanks for joining us all. Yeah, we've got more here, some from California. Brilliant. Thanks for joining us today. Um, so yeah, if you want to contact me after the webinar, just pull it at adespresso.com or um, on Twitter there, just at adespresso, and that'll reach myself or one of the team there. So very briefly, what we're going to be covering, um, there's a lot to cover, so I hope you've all had your espresso today. But we're going to start with a quick overview of the landscape for the holiday season, then how to plan for it, looking at the key timings, and there's kind of four phases that we're going to go through. We're touching on creative that you should be using and what placements. And again, just touching on the audiences, bidding, offers, a little bit there, just a little kind of end note there about kind of how to combine offline and online together. And then what I call plumbing, which is just some kind of settings that you need to be looking at before we get into that really critical holiday season there. So before we get into um, the webinar too much, we're going to have a quick poll here. So just let me go and launch this poll, hopefully. Uh, here we go. So should see a little poll there. Um, just we want to know before we dig into webinar so I can customize it how much you intend to spend on the holiday season there are you going to be spending more than you normally do for the rest of the year are you going to be spending less is it going to be about the same or are you just starting out with with Facebook ads there uh, which is absolutely fine so it's quite a lot of votes coming in just going to leave that for a few more seconds yep it's starting to stabilize now so if you just get your votes in awesome that's really good there so what we're seeing is um, 40% of, well, just share the results here, sorry. There we go. So we're seeing that 40% of you are going to be spending more, only 2% less. Now, that's what we kind of expect. So that's a really good sign uh, for what we're going to cover in the webinar. Some people spend about the same, and then some of you just getting started, which is really great because we're going to cover some strategies that you can uh, action straight away there. So, you know, time is running out to get up to speed for the holiday season but we're gonna cover absolutely everything that you need there. So let's go and have a start with the overview here. Um, we've all seen these uh, images. This is how Black Friday looks in stores, but how does it look online? How does it look on social media? No. Um, this is a, a little graph that Facebook shared from the results last year here. And what we can see is this is uh, about people talking about the, the holiday season. Thanksgiving, there's definitely a spike there. Black Friday is the really big one. And then something that's quite surprising is Small Business Saturday is actually bigger than Cyber Monday in terms of conversation. So maybe there's something there if you're a small business, you could attach on to that as well there. But you kind of get the idea is that during that key weekend, there's a lot of conversations happening. Uh, some more stats from Facebook. Last year, 130 million people plus um, talked about Thanksgiving shopping weekend there. Um, <laughs> this is quite an incredible stat. 450 million views of videos uh, relating to Black Friday over that Thanksgiving shopping weekend. So you can see videos just driving so many conversations there. 
And from a business perspective, uh, one in three businesses were posting Instagram stories over Thanksgiving weekend. So we can see Facebook and Instagram are really at the heart of the conversations there, uh, which is something that we want to tap into as businesses and advertisers. So let's see how that actually reflects us in terms of Facebook advertising. Now, I've got a couple of graphs for you here. And um, the first one, this is actually one of my clients from last year. And um, there's two lines there. The first line is this turquoise line, which is the CPM or the cost per thousand impressions. And really the take home message is that just, um, we look at this turquoise line here, it's around about baseline when we're getting into October, around about $10 CPM. The exact figures don't matter. It's gonna vary for every business. But what we can see is that as we get into December and also around about this holiday weekend, we're looking at $25 CPM. So two and a half times the baseline. That's a huge jump in distribution costs. There is some good news though. The kind of brownie orange line, our cost per click, it doesn't jump up straight away, even though we're paying more for uh, distribution over the holiday season. People are what I call very clicky at this stage. They're, they're clicking and they're buying. So it, it means there's a lot of opportunity there. The cost per click, it does go up from say um, $1 up to around about over $3. So there's a 3X increase in cost per click as we get towards the end of the holiday season there. But what it means is that there's a lot of opportunities there, but we, we need a good strategy in place. We can't just be throwing ads out there, not doing a testing and hope for the best because it's just too competitive, it's too expensive. Um, some research that we did ourselves here, um, again, we can just look at the, the prices of cost per click over time. Don't worry about the exact figures, it varies by country, it varies by business, but what we can see is, you know, September's nice and low, beginning of October is fine, and then it just ramps up there. Um, every time you place a Facebook campaign, it's going into an auction there. And what you'll find is that, you know, the, the more people bidding on that space, the more expensive it's going to be there. Um, just look at some of your questions. I can see for one of you, it looks like you, the audio is dropping in and out. Uh, apologies for any connection issues there, but we will be sending you out the recording afterwards. Also check out our YouTube channel, Ad Espresso on YouTube, and we'll put the recording there uh, tomorrow sometime for you. So that's the overview of where we are with the landscape. Um, now, how do we go and put that strategy in place? The first thing, of course, that we need to do is think about how we're going to plan there. Now, what you could do is whether you're an agency or whether you're actually the business itself, it's, it's create some kind of guide for yourself, some kind of checklist, a, a campaign planner, basically. Now, this is one from Facebook. I know it's a little bit hard to see here, um, but what I've done for you is so you can get all the details is if you go to the handout section uh, and go to webinar there, you'll be able to download this. So this is the official Facebook 2018 holiday guide. It's, it's got those planners in there, so you can fill them in saying either as yourself or if an agency, send them to your clients and really uh, plan your campaigns in advance. <clears throat> the more you do now, the better the success you're gonna get. There's also a really nice guide from Google. Remember, we've now got Google uh, AdWords there. Um, so that's something that's in Adespresso, but even if you're not using Adespresso, there's some good inspiration and some research there from Google. So that's another free guide you can download from GoToWebinar. So once we've got an idea of how we can uh, plan things and map them out, let's look at some of the timings here. And this is gonna be really critical to success. So first of all, key dates. Uh, Thanksgiving is on the 22nd of November this year. Um, even if you're not in the US, then Black Friday is now big across quite a lot of the world. Um, I know Facebook did some research and it's certainly picking up year on year at quite a scary rate there. Uh, like I was saying, Small Business Saturday is quite a big event as well. Um, you can probably tell from my accent, I'm based in the UK. We do have it on a slightly different date. I think it's about a week later in the UK. So, you know, check what's happening locally, but you kind of get the ideas of what you can uh, plug into there. Cyber Monday is probably the busiest day for online shopping. Giving Tuesday as well. So that's where you could uh, highlight some of the ethical sides to your business. Um, I think Mo there's just saying you can't see the document. So just check that handout section. Um, but if you just Google for those, if you don't get hold of that there, it's the Facebook holiday guide and the, uh, the Google uh, holiday small business guide there. So um, what I've done from those key dates is really put them into four phases. Uh, this is something that Facebook do themselves in their guide. Is we really got four, four elements that we need to think about. First of, is the warm up stage, which is now, like we saw our you know, cost per click and our CPM, 
uh, distribution cost is pretty reasonable. We then, as we get into November, we get into the main event. This is when people are buying, um, but it's also going to be quite expensive as well. So that's the thing that we definitely need to be planning for an event. And then something that's forgotten about is December, about maximizing sales. How can we get the most out of people that are already buying for us? You know, the, the holiday season uh, doesn't end after Black Friday. There's actually a lot of potential after that. And then another thing that's really overlooked and a lot of people don't think about, but it's one of my favorite times for selling, is when we get into January in the new year, um, which is something we'll cover, we get some very good ad prices and some good sales then. So four phases, let's have a quick look at the warm up here. Uh, from that Google holiday uh, playbook, um, what, we, what we can see here is they've done some research is that around about half of the shoppers have begun their research in October or earlier. So that's why we need to be planning now. That's why we're having this uh, research there. Um, and then last year, you know, about 30% of holiday shopping was completed before Thanksgiving. Um, certainly myself, I've been quite organized this year. I've got a couple of main presents to spread the money out. So the sooner we start, the better there. Um, just jumping into the questions again, I can see Jomar saying, can I see two handouts? Uh, that's correct. There is two handouts there, one from Facebook and one from Google, and the planning sheets are in the Facebook guide there. So I know there's a lot going on with this webinar, but if you download those, then afterwards at your leisure, have a look through those and say the Facebook guide, really, really good for planning. And then the Google guide has got some research like we've seen here. So how do we make the most of the, the fairly cheap distribution costs and those cheap cost per clicks in phase one? Well, this is where we wanna be testing everything. Once we get to phase two, the main event, we don't wanna be testing, it's gonna be way too expensive. But the way to capitalize on that is to be doing some testing there. Now, we do a $1,000 experiment every week at Adespresso. This is also um, published on our, um, on our website there in Adespresso Academy as part of adespresso.com. You can look at any of our experiments. But for example, we did a test this month where we tested an animation video against Massimo and poor old Massimo, the cost per lead when we used that face to camera video there. It's quite a bit higher. We're looking at seven, seven dollars sixty compared to just under four dollars there. So we can see that testing makes a big, big difference there. Um, another test that we did, very, very simple. We did the same ad creative, um, but the um, we tested a different call to action button there. This is for a lead generation campaign. We tested like download versus learn more versus sign up and no button. You can see the cost per lead went from $5 up to $12. So we can like halve your cost there. Um, I always say to clients, you know, if you test, you can make $1,000 go as far as $2,000 or $3,000 or even $4,000 in some cases. It makes a big difference to your bottom line there. Um, Obviously, I use Ad Espresso for this. I've been working on some client campaigns today where we tested maybe six images and six different ad techs. So we're doing rapid testing at this stage and we're launching new campaigns every day to really dial everything in before that crucial main event phase there. Um, you don't have to do this in Ad Espresso. It will make your life a lot, lot easier if you do. But there's, there's obviously you can go and duplicate ads in Ads Manager there if you've got the time and patience to do that there. So testing is one key thing in the warm-up stage there. And then um, another thing to think about this stage is we need to feed that funnel. So once we get into uh, phase two, which we'll come to in a second, um, that's where we're gonna concentrate on warm audiences. But of course, we can only focus on those if we're feeding that funnel. So just think about things that we can do this. Uh, I'm a big fan of competitions there. Maybe very simple giveaways, just get people to like that post. We'll come to this later in the webinar about how we can use those engagement audiences. But just think, you know, however you're doing it here, maybe you're having some brand awareness ads, some nice videos. Uh, maybe you're just telling people about your, your brand mission there, but be feeding that top of the funnel there. Um, so as we go on, I'm keeping eyes on the questions here. And I know some of you are having little problems like connecting to downloads, but just if you go and email paul at adespresso.com, you can see it here, or just tweet at adespresso. We'll make sure that everybody gets those there. So another thing to do in phase one is some really good research and a couple of tips for you here. The first is that as part of Facebook's transparency, they now have the info and ads tab. If you click on that, that's on any page, you can see what ads are running. If you wanna see what ads we're running, you can just click on that there. And I'm using this at the moment to research competitors and still their best ideas. Obviously not go and copy them 100%, but just for inspiration there. 
the other thing that we can do as well is um, recommend using Ad Espresso's ads gallery. We've got over one and a half million ads. It's getting close to um, two million ads there now. Um, there is a free version where we, we give you just a handful of ads there if you sign up on our website at espresso.com and then customers get the, the, the full Monty there. So that's just something there. Um, the difference between the info and ads tab is that shows you all ads that are currently running. Whereas our ads gallery, it doesn't contain every single ad, but it's got an archive of one. So maybe somebody isn't actively advertising now. You can still see some previous ads there. Great, so you get the idea with phase one there is that we wanna be doing testing, testing audiences, testing ad creative, doing some research and feeding that funnel. Now onto the main event here. So what kind of ads do we wanna run? And one thing that we don't wanna run is probably not been doing our brand awareness. You know, this is an ad here I got from our ads gallery about Walmart. You know, hey, have you got a cat? Do you want some cat toys? Uh, this isn't the time to do nice, cute, fluffy pictures and just ge generate that goodwill and brand awareness. That's what we do in phase one. Instead, we need to really capitalize over that Black Friday weekend there. So this is what Walmart did uh, last year there. They did a carousel. They just put their best deals there, got their big hitters. We can see, uh, I think this is a flat screen TV, uh, laptop. Then they've got like a Disney toys there. So this is what they're doing, really direct, really in your face. No brand awareness, no warm up at all. They've already done that. This is straight into the holiday sales season here. Another example of this is just keep it very high contrast, very simple on the graphic there, 50% off the headline, half price on everything. Uh, the ad text, one line, 50% off. This is the kind of stuff that we're looking for. No need to get too clever. Uh, people are gonna be there, sitting there with their, hopefully with their credit card, looking to buy over that Black Friday weekend. So simplify it down for people there, make it easy for them to go and purchase and find the best deals there. So I think it's the main event. Um, like I just saying there, keep it simple, keep it high impact for the ads. Um, your CPM is high, so we're gonna focus on our warm audiences, which we're gonna cover soon. Uh, include a great offer. And again, we're gonna cover this in the main part of the webinar later on. But let's go, and I just wanted to give you one tip on the main event before we move on to phase three. So a little thing which I haven't really seen covered that much is if you go into your ads manager account and you navigate to this tab on the left, the account overview, the one that people forget about because they go to campaigns, ad sets and ads, there's a little one here uh, hiding away called creative reporting. Now, if you click on this, what it does is it aggregates your ads performance there. So like you'll see this ad for Pixel Caffeine, our little WordPress plugin, we've got that running over 14 different, uh, well, 14 different ads, over different ad sets, different campaigns. It's very hard sometimes to see what works and the creative reporting tab aggregates that all together. So how can you use that to your benefit there? Um, if you go to the right hand column in Ads Manager, where you've got all your metrics there, there's a little plus button. And what I'd recommend is that you just customize it so that you can see the metrics important to you, whether it's cost per lead, cost per sale, maybe it's ROAS, your return on ad spend, whatever's important to you, go and make sure you've customized that report so you can see your main metrics. And then you can rank these. Um, so you just click on those and rank it by that. And what you can do is you can look at different views. So maybe it's lifetime, so you're getting your all-time best ads. I'll call it my, like my greatest hits album. Um, or maybe it's from last holiday season, so you can look at what you used last Black Friday. Or maybe it's the results from your phase one testing there. Whatever it is, you can use creative reporting, dial in the reports, find the very, very best ads there. And then what we can do is we can then uh, pull up those ad previews, and at the end of the URL, you're gonna get an ad ID. And then with it Ads Manager, you can paste in the ad ID there. Um, you'll see a little button when you create an ad to use existing ad, and you can put in that ad ID there. So that's a strategy that you can use once you've been doing testing. But remember, this is only gonna work if you're rapidly testing um, or, or you've done a previous ad copy there. So if you're new to Facebook advertising, like I knew, know about 40% of you are, then think about using Ad Espresso to go and split test in phase one, and then you can reuse some of those ads there in phase two there. So, so we'll go back to some of those strategies later on, but let's have a quick look at phase three now. This is where we go and maximize sales. This is where we get into December, you know, the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Giving Tuesday, and so on, weekend is over. 
Um, how do we get that final push before the uh, Christmas actually arrives there? So one thing we can do is people that have purchased, can we upsell to them? You know, if somebody's purchased from you, much easier to get them to purchase again rather than prospecting to that cold traffic there. So this is the example of an ad here. Um, Good night stories for rebel girls. We've got a really nice illustrated uh, uh, sort of children's book there. And so you can actually buy um, framed versions. We can buy the posters there that are um, illustrations from the book. So you, they can build an audience of people that have purchased recently and before the holiday season go, hey, come back and buy a poster. Similarly, there's Globin, which are a subscription box. And once people subscribed, they can get them to get add-ons for Christmas. You know, it's all, they're going to be shipped to their box anyway. So you might as well get some add-ons with it. So that's what I'd like you to do in December is think about how you can maximize the people that are already in your funnel, especially those people that have already bought. Um, it's a real mistake to just leave those people alone. Now, we don't want to hassle them too much, but how can we just increase that average uh, revenue per user there? Something else that we can do, um, we can make life easy for ourselves by automating things is we can do dynamic product ads. And there's something there called cross-sell. Um, this is where we can be using the uh, product catalog to retarget people that have already purchased from us. Um, this is just a quick view in Ads Manager. And we've also got it in Ads Manager as well. You can just choose that cross uh, or upselling item there. And you could choose probably a good product set here. So what happens with dynamic product ads? And we won't go into this too much because that could be a whole new webinar. But you have your full product catalog. Um, but sometimes you don't want to show that all. Instead, you might be using a product set. So like we saw with Rebel Girls, is that rather than showing people books, you might then go and show them the add-ons. Could it be a poster, postcards, tote bags, those sorts of things. So you could create a specific product set for um, add-ons and then use the dynamic product ads cross-selling there. So that's the end of phase three. That's kind of, we're now just kind of got through the Christmas season there. And this is a stage where retailers really just uh, take their foot off their pedal and, and they can relax and they think job done. OK, we can leave Facebook alone now and, and we'll just go and tick along for the new year. And, and this is the where I actually love people doing that because I make so much money on Facebook because the CPM is probably at the lowest it's going to be. Um, people have got a lot of money to spend still. Um, a little stat there from the Facebook holiday guide is that 46% of shoppers say that they shop in January to take advantage of additional holiday sales. I find January, people have got that time. Obviously, it depends where you are in the world, but for a lot of regions, it's kind of cold, it's gloomy, you want to be comfort shopping. Um, you've got your budget sorted out because you've bought all your Christmas presents. Now you've got some money left over to spend on yourselves. You've got some gift cards and so on. This is a great time as an advertiser. So I really urge you um, to be planning ahead now a quarter and really be thinking about what you're going to be doing after Christmas there. Let's go back to this slide. I know we saw, saw this earlier, but um, just to kind of illustrate, you know, that we kind of like after summer, the ad prices build up and up and up and then they get drop again in January. So, yeah, great time to be ramping things up before we start getting into not so much the holiday season, but uh, beginning of the year, you've got things like Valentine's, you've got Easter, you've got Mother's Day, you've got Father's Day. I know it depends by regions and things like that, but you kind of get an idea that January and February, a uh, really good time there to really maximize some extra sales there. So that's the kind of four phases that we've covered there. So really map it out and work, work out what's going to work for your business and think about planning ahead because you have not got time to be testing things where it's going to just be too expensive to do that during the holiday weekend there. So how can we really maximize things during that, um, that kind of phase two, the main event? Um, let's have a quick look at some different aspects and because we need to tack things on all fronts here. So add creative and placements. During that peak holiday season, um, Facebook just runs out of spare ad space. It's insane that Facebook's only got so many slots for ads. And during the rest of the year, there's some spare capacity. It just literally has no more ads it can show during that holiday season. Everybody's piling in their budgets for the year there. Like we saw with our poll is hardly anybody's spending less. Everybody's going to be spending more during the holiday season there. So it's going to be very competitive. Um, and what we need to do to ensure we get good distribution for ads and really battle that rise in CPM, like we saw it can go up two and a half times, is think about using extra placements. 
And really to get the most out of placements, think about using a range of creative. It's not that one particular creative is better than another. It's that we wanna be putting several in the mix there so we can get good results. So for example, square video, big, big fan of this. Uh, probably like 15 to 30 second video I get all my clients to use. And the great thing about this is, is it's very versatile. We can use it on desktop and mobile for the Facebook newsfeed, and it looks really great there in the Instagram feed. Just maybe on Instagram to keep it under 60 seconds, otherwise it's not gonna be eligible for ads on Instagram. <clears throat> the other thing we can do is still use our traditional landscape images. The great thing about those is again, they can reach more placements. They're great for desktop and mobile newsfeed on Facebook. Not so good on Instagram. Instagram, I'd use square images instead. But the great thing about these is we can get some extra capacity there on the right-hand column, especially good for retargeting. And there's things like the messenger inbox there. So yeah, this can be extremely useful to mix up different ad creative rather than just always focus on one type there. Another thing that we can do is, again, go back to our $1,000 experiments that we run each month. So we did a test on Instagram feed ads versus Instagram stories. You can go onto our website uh, at espresso.com and you can look at our experiments there in our blog section. But to summarize, we found Instagram stories just a touch more expensive, but not very much. And bearing in mind that we're a B2B company, uh, <laughs> Instagram stories is more geared up for consumers. So I think if you ran that experiment as a consumer brand, you'd find very similar results there. So Instagram stories, another way of reaching people, sometimes new people, a lot of people hang out on stories and they're just not on Facebook that much these days. Depends on the user there. So again, use Instagram stories. It's a way of keeping our distribution costs down, that CPM, and also reaching some new people there. So just put everything that you can into the mix. And that's why we need to be planning now. So you've got square video, landscape images, and then portrait video for Instagram stories. So that just gives you an idea of the audiences and creative. Uh, so that gives you an idea of the placements and uh, the creative. So what kind of audiences do we want to be using there for the main event? Well, the CPM, as we've covered several times already, is going to be crazy high. So we want to be focusing on our best audiences there. On phase one, which is now, we can be doing that cold traffic prospecting. But during that holiday uh, weekend there, we need to be focusing on our best audiences. There's kind of five audiences there, and we're going to dig through those in a little bit more detail. So the first is our previous purchases. It stands the reason, and I see this with all my clients. The people that purchased last year are the ones most likely to go and buy from you again. So don't just ignore people because you think, oh, they've purchased, job done. This is the time to use them again. And um, they've probably been rested for the best part of a year. Let's go and reuse their audience. So how do we find those previous purchasers? Two ways. First is the Facebook pixel. A very, very high match rate there. It can find most of these people that purchase through your website, but only for 180 days. So we can't go back to last Christmas. So the way to find those people is to use our email lists. But the match rate is only about 60 to 70 percent for consumer brands there. So what we need to do is basically use both of them. We can build an audience of people that buy on our pixel and by email, which we'll go through in a bit more detail in a second here. So if you're using um, if you want to create an audience there from the pixel, when you go to create an audience there in um, Business Manager, you'll see that you can create a custom audience of website visitors. And there's a little drop down box here. You can create an audience of purchasers. Again, if you, you're a business doing like lead gen instead, and you wanna get those leads to do other things, you can pick leads or whatever pixels basically are gonna be on your website there. The next thing that we can do is to build an audience based off email subscribers. So I've got a little video just to show you how this works here. So we go and create an audience there. In business manager choose to create a custom audience choose the file. Um, that's going to be commerce separated value file and once we've uploaded that, it's so you can find it again click on next and facebook's going to upload it and it's going to match some id uh, some fields there like in this case it's matching a customer id and thinks it's a phone number and then it's gone and found the first name but it hasn't gone and matched that so you go through it manually don't trust facebook to go and match the fields properly there 
So yeah, that's what we want to do is make sure we've matched everything. And once we're happy with that, go and upload that. Just takes a few seconds to upload, depends on the size of your file. And once it's had, uh, once it's uploaded, then that's going to be available for you probably within half an hour to an hour from there. And then what we could do from those is, um, as well as uploading, I mean, that's a bit of a hassle, is that what we don't want to be doing is having to download uh, CSV files from our, um, our database and then uploading all the time. We're going to be too busy in the holiday season. So think about ways they can sync this. And what we want to do is do some kind of automatically uh, mechanism to sync this. You get the software to do the heavy lifting. How do we do this? Well, we can use some tools. Uh, I haven't got any endorsement on these, by the way. All I'd like to say for some of these tools is use a trusted one because they are going to be funneling your data there. So certainly with GDPR, you've got Canadian equivalents coming to the US as well. Don't just use an, uh, a kind of no name brand. Go for something that's a market leader. Leeds Bridge has got 380 CRMs there. It's around about 30 bucks a month, I think, last time I looked. Drift Rock, um, they're quite well known. Not sure on their pricing, they're more enterprise level. And then uh, we've got the main ones within our Espresso. I think we've got about 11 CRMs here. All the big ones like HubSpot, MailChimp, Infusionsoft. Uh, we can link up to Google Sheets and things like this. Now, if you've got an Ad Espresso account, we include this for free. So that, that's something where you don't then have to get another tool. You don't have to pay another subscription there. So if you do have Ad Espresso, go into the Tools tab and have a look for Data Sync there. So you can see, let's go and sync up as much as we can. Um, other audience that we can do is we can create that audience of previous website visitors to target there. Great warm audience. They've shown a lot of intent by clicking on your ads. Or well, this could be organic traffic as well and going through to your website. So like the um, purchase audience or the lead audience, we go and create a website custom audience, but we just choose the whole website there. You can segment it by sections of the website as well. And you can put this time window there for up to 180 days. The next audiences that we can create, and these are quite new and really, really overlooked, um, but they're engagement audiences. Very, very powerful for brands that maybe don't have loads and loads of website traffic, or maybe you're new um, to Facebook, like a lot of you are, with your paid strategy there. And so we, we can look at some of our um, organic audiences that we're using on Facebook. So the audiences that we can use there, we can see there's six different ones. We're going to cover an event later on, um, but we can have a quick look at the other five here. It's video view audiences. You can create an audience based on people that watch three seconds, 10 seconds, or a percentage of your video there. Uh, depending on how long it is, then you can choose some audiences. And you can choose multiple videos there as well um, to be included in that audience. Uh, lead forms, uh, you can create an audience of people that have maybe opened the lead form or have opened it but didn't submit, or people that have submitted the form. Uh, there's instant experience, which is the new name for Canvas. So if you're running a Canvas ads, you can go and create an audience of people that have viewed those. Really, really powerful one is an audience of people that have engaged with your Facebook page. There's quite a few variations here. So a little tip is we get this little I button here. Uh, that's a little tool tip. And when you hover over that, Facebook will give you the exact definition so you can work out all the different ones. So like we said about phase one, feeding the funnel, you could be running a competition on your Facebook page, get people to like the post to enter, and then we can be creating that audience to retarget them in phase two. Hopefully you can start seeing how everything comes together now. We'll say from the Instagram page, I've got some clients that do a lot on Instagram more than they do on Facebook. Um, then we can be using those audiences as well. Just remember, it has to be a business profile on Instagram, but they're going to be free to create there, so no big deal. But again, we could be running a competition or um, just really getting some organic reach on there, and then we can be creating those audiences. Um, and a strategy I like to use is maybe run um, more organic engagement on Instagram and then retarget them on mobile where they've got higher intent to buy. Now, sometimes you might go and saturate these audiences, and we do need to go and prospect with some cold audiences. Totally understandable, especially if you're working with larger budgets, or maybe you just haven't ramped up many ads and you don't have much traffic and audiences to work with. No problem. Um, great thing that we can do is to use some lookalike audiences. 
So look at like audience is where we give Facebook a seed audience and it goes away and creates an audience of people with very similar characteristics there. Again, we could have a whole webinar on custom audiences, um, but just to give you a little kind of cheat sheet here, the best lookalike is based off a high quality seed audience there. So kind of in terms of low quality to best quality is page fans and video views, they're quite weak interaction. If we can then move down to page engagers, that's going to be better. Website visitors, even better still. They've shown more intent. They've actually had to click on things there. And the leads, they've actually filled in their details. So we're getting much warmer. And then, of course, um, if it applies to your business, purchases, and then we can segment them out. People that purchased more than so much uh, cart value, people that purchased more than once, or we can upload a customer lifetime value file as well, which is quite easy to export from things like Shopify. I, again, I'm only touch, touching on this, but any questions, just get in touch with me, always tweet or email there. Be happy to give you some more details on there. But that's definitely what I've been looking for. Very quick to create, just a couple of clicks in Ad Espresso or within Business Manager, we can go and create those lookalike audiences there. So let's move on from audiences. Let's have a quick look at some of the offers that we want to be using now in our ads. There's four main offer types that I'd be looking at. Um, free accessories, giving the classic percentage discount, um, that money, money off coupon code and free shipping there. And really, it's not about just using one. There's it's working out what's best for your business there. And, and maybe you can mix and match some of these different offers as well there. Free accessories though is definitely my favorite. This is where there may be an item that you can buy in bulk, um, but it's gonna give your customer a good deal, but also protect your margins there. I'm not a big fan of giving huge discounts all the time. It kind of erodes your brand a bit there and really eats into your margins. This is some classic examples of these. You'll probably see these on a lot of websites you go to. Maybe if you're buying free sunglasses as a retailer, you can give that user there um, a free case. You know, maybe the case has got $15 retail value. If you're buying in bulk, you might get them for a couple of bucks. So the customer gets a big win and you get to and brand identity there. I see this all the time with sports supplements, uh, free protein shakers. I do a lot of cycling when I buy protein powders, I always get offered free protein shakers there. If you're doing jewelry, you can buy chains in bulk and you can offer that with a pendant there. You can apply it to any type of business. Um, you know, if you're selling shoes, it's going to be a shoe shine kit. Uh, if you're selling dresses, it could be a belt that goes with it. Any sort of things, you can find something that's going to be a good deal for you and the customer. Next thing we could do is percentage discount. Different studies tell you different things. So I've looked through about half a dozen studies. I think my take home message is use percentage discounts if it's a small value item. You know, 20% off $20, uh, $25 item sounds better than, oh, here's $5 off there. Money off. Um, again, you know, different theories on this, but I think it works well with a high ticket item. You know, $25 off sounds better when it's a $250 item rather than, oh, here's 10% there. And then finally, free shipping. And what we want to do, use this, is be strategic. Use it closer to Christmas. During phase three, people aren't necessarily looking for deals. What they want to do is make sure they can get it guaranteed for Christmas there. So free expedited shipping, or we call it express shipping in certain regions, uh, with guaranteed pre-Christmas delivery, very, very useful. I had some clients that actually really dropped the ball last December, is they kept shifting their um, last shipping day, they didn't offer express shipping. And what we found is after about the first week of December, sales really dried up. Um, and so we've learned from that, and this is why we're planning now. And so we're gonna make sure that we can keep ramping things up right until the end. Also, get clever, can you give gift wrapping options? You know, maybe somebody lives in a different country compared to the recipient or different region there. If we can say, right, we're gonna guarantee it's gonna be delivered to your aunt or uncle or whoever. We're gonna give you some free express shipping. We're gonna gift wrap it for you. Job done, that's what people want rather than like 50% off as we get into December. A um, little tip on this, if you are using coupon codes, keep them simple. A lot of your traffic is gonna be coming from mobile. They're not gonna be able to write down some complicated code. It's difficult to switch between tabs. You know, keep it as simple as you can. Could it be just Black Friday, could it be holiday or whatever? So a quick shout out to uh, Andrew Foxwell for that tip there. He's been very, very helpful with discussing some ideas for Q4 there. 
So let's move on from offers. Let's go and look at some of the tactics that we can be using there when placing our ads. First is bidding. Um, for phase one, I'm going to be using lowest cost bidding. Facebook is, is the algorithm is better than us at working out what kind of bid strategy to use. So I just go for the default there. Uh, something to really be careful of as we get into phase two is make sure you haven't got a low bid cap set. Um, we know ad price is going to be higher there. Don't really restrict your budgets. You know, if we have a too small a bid cap, yeah, it might work for 90% of the year. It probably isn't going to work for that Black Friday weekend, and then our ads aren't going to run. So remove any bid caps. But if you are using bid caps, put an insanely high bid cap and really dare Facebook say, hey, I dare you to spend as much as my budget as possible. This is where we're just really piling into that budget during the holiday weekend there. I'm really trying to beat all the competition. So gives you some ideas on the strategy that we can be using. Um, we can also just be thinking um, really high level here about how we can capitalize on things. And something again that's really over, overlooked by advertisers is we're all sometimes like tunnel vision, we're kind of laser focused on converting people online. It's actually 10 times easier to convert that sale offline there. And Facebook gives us some uh, powerful tools, which we'll dig into in a second, on how we can match online and offline. And a stat that I had to check several times to make sure it was accurate, but it does seem to be from uh, US Census data last year. You know, the exact figure doesn't matter, but most of these studies were saying over 90% of retail sales in the US still take place offline in physical stores. But we also know that most of the population is on Facebook and Instagram. So how can we can combine those? Um, this is something that appeared in my newsfeed recently. Um, just like a gin tasting event, I'm really into gin. And um, I think it's the stress of running Facebook ads sometimes. Uh, but, you know, if uh, I had a coaching call with a client that was selling premium spirits. And it's very hard if you've got a premium product to sell that online. People can't taste it. <laughs> Quite as simple as that. They, they don't know what it's like, you know. Go into delis, do some gin tasting, run some local Facebook events, quite cheap to run them just in a local area. Chat to the people, give them a gin and tonic, you can convert them very easily. You can do this for just about any product. People really like to look and feel the quality. They wanna to talk to you, they know they can return it to a store if possible. So I know we can't do that for all businesses, but just something as an aside there, if you have got that physical business, uh, really capitalize on that. There's huge opportunity, which is often overlooked. Remember with those event ads on Facebook, um, if you haven't looked at them for a while, um, have another look at those. They've really evolved them recently. For example, um, I, I still sometimes forget that you can now integrate ticket sales straight into a Facebook event there. They've got a link up with Eventbrite. You can put in the URL when creating that um, post, and then you can sell the ticket straight from um, from the event post there, so they don't even need to leave Facebook. Obviously, if it's like a $300 conference, they're gonna to want to go to your website. But for like a $10, $10 event, um, I had somebody doing like a, a, a cinema event, that worked extremely well there, so something you can think about. And like we covered earlier, those engagement audiences, I promised that we're gonna have a look at the engagement ones. Uh, Facebook have added loads and loads. So again, you're gonna to want to look at the tool tips. But what you could do is maybe you could build an audience of people who said that they were going to that event. So they came along and maybe they didn't purchase then, but they they, they had a look at your product. Um, they got to talk to you. You can then retarget going, hey, we can deliver to your door. Here's a 10% coupon code or whatever there. Or maybe just people that were interested, maybe they didn't actually come along. Um, we could actually go and build an audience of people that were interested, exclude those that said they were going, and retarget them saying, hey, we're gonna run another event soon. I wouldn't really get too clever with this. I'd keep it quite simple um, because a lot of people just like click that they're gonna be going and maybe they don't attend, they don't, um, or they don't kind of update their status, but just have a look through this and think how could you use it for your business. Now, I'm gonna finish up with um, just what I call plumbing, basically some settings there in your um, ads manager account there. So I've just got a handful of tips for you. So first is to place a test campaign. I know a lot of retailers um, aren't gonna be spending too much on Facebook ads the rest of the year. So your account's been mothballed for a while. It's been in hibernation. And then you wanna blast everything out for the holiday weekend. And honestly, the stress that I see from advertisers where they find a problem, 
has everybody on the team got access to business manager have they got the right access you know is there a problem with your pixel is your payment source up to date we can get we can remove all that stress by placing a test campaign I had just a week in advance there um you know if I got a dollar for every time somebody was contacting me or contacted our support team over the weekend going help I'm gonna lose all of my valuable holiday campaigns because of a setting it would be really rich so just make sure that you make life easy for yourself even if you place a five dollar test campaign do it in advance please um, next thing is check your account spending limits. Um, you might not even realize that you've got a spending limit there. Um, a lot of time it just doesn't apply because you just tick along with a regular cadence of spending. And then what happens, of course, is we throw in budget. We, we might be 10xing our budget over the holidays. And then suddenly we're looking on sticking our ads and going, why aren't they spending any more? Why are they reaching a ceiling and not spending any more? It could be because you've got that account spending limit there. So either change it or remove it, or just go and reset it there from Ads Manager. You'll see it there in the settings section. Basically, when you go to Business Manager, there's what's called the hamburger icon on the top left, and then you'll see somewhere um, access to your account settings. Really, really big tip for you, for you here. If you only take one tip away from the plumbing section, book your campaigns in advance. And the great thing about Facebook is you can schedule your campaigns well in advance. Um, probably up to six months. I, I can't actually see a, a figure for it, but well, well in advance. So what happens is, of course, everybody gets really reliant on Facebook approving ads within five minutes. And that's great when they do an automatic review. But sometimes they decide to do a manual review on your account. And again, we kind of get a bit complacent and think, OK, it's going to be a couple of hours at worst, 24 hours. Now, with all the best will in the world is, you know, Facebook have only got so many staff and over Black Friday, they are just saturated. They do their very best. They're a great team, but it could take 48 hours to get your ad approved. So, you know, we're thinking, right, we're going to run this, this Black Friday sale. We're going to launch it at 6 a.m. on Friday, and then it doesn't run until Sunday. And um, that's it. We, we, it's the disaster. Avoid all that. Just should do your ads a couple of days in advance. If it needs a manual review, hey, we've given Facebook a good 48 hours head start. We're going to slip through review plain selling for your ads. Uh, we just don't want any stress over the holiday season. Use all those tools available for you. Um, another tip here is check your images have an OK rating. Um, again, if I had a dollar for everybody that said, hey, my ads have run perfectly fine all for the last you know, 10 months. Why is it suddenly stopped now? They sh it shouldn't stop. Then I'd be quite rich. Because what happens is when Facebook's got loads of spare ad inventory the rest of the year, it doesn't really matter if there's a couple of glitches with your ad. It's still going to find space to run there. You know, it might be at the back of the queue, but if it can serve everybody in the queue, we're absolutely fine. The problem that you get in that holiday season is Facebook are going to get picky. You're only going to run ads that are 100% compliant there. So we see this a lot with text. <clears throat> a lot of times, even for Ad Espresso, I might run ads with low, medium, maybe even a high rating, and they run absolutely fine. And then we get to holiday season and they just turn off there. So make sure your ads are going to be compliant. There's a Facebook text overlay tool. Just Google literally for Facebook text overlay tool. Check your assets in advance. I'm still finding a lot of graphic designers aren't really aware of these uh, uh, of the 20% text rule. So make sure you take take care of your assets well in advance. And again, you shouldn't get any stress because rather than having to phone up your um, graphic designer on Thanksgiving, pull them away from their turkey. Make sure you just plan in advance there. Um, last tip for you on this is to create a daily report. <clears throat> we don't always have time for every team member to be digging into Ads Manager and babysitting all the campaigns. Create some reports for this. <clears throat> now, within Ads Manager, we can automate this for you. You can build a report. I can build them probably in about two minutes. We do have some templates. I built one the other day in probably about 90 seconds. Um, but it's just something to be aware of that if you're an Ad Espresso user, go to the tool section, PDF reports, you can automate them on a daily or weekly basis. You can create multiple reports as well. They can be delivered to your inbox nice and fresh. And what I do is when I'm dealing with multiple clients, this is absolutely really gold stuff if you're an agency is maybe you know if I'm running ads for 10 clients I can just be dipping in in the morning check all my reports in my inbox look for anything that needs attention and focus on that and then the other ones yeah maybe I've got time to dip into them maybe I don't but I can make sure that I'm going to really 
dedicate my time to what matters for you. Even if you're just a single brand there, creating reports can be very, very useful um, for maybe other team members. Maybe you've got somebody who's not like hands on with the ads, but they need to be checking the results there and then you can make sure that you're on the right course. So thanks for joining me uh, throughout this webinar. Now we've covered quite a bit there. Um, I know there's a lot to take in, so I want to give you. Well, I want to be able to help you here. Um, if you're finding that it kind of makes sense, but you're thinking, "Oh my God, where do I start?" or "I need my, I need some extra one-on-one -on -one help with this," we do have some marketplace services within Adespresso that can help you here, both for Facebook and for Google Ads. So what we can do here, three services. The first is we can do 10 minute tactical reviews. We can produce a screencast of your campaign and we can talk you through this. At the moment, this is just for Adespresso customers. If you're watching a replay on YouTube, then I think from round about the, the end of the year, round about the end of 2018, we're gonna be opening this out as well to, um, you know, across everybody using Facebook there. So keep an eye on that. Just go onto our website for more details. Um, also, just if you're in Adespresso, you'll see a campaign review button from the dashboard of any campaign. Also, we can do one-on-one -on -one power hours. We can give you a strategy session. Look at the high-level strategy for your business. This is where we can do a one-on-one -on -one session with one of our experts, either with myself or one of our team. We will specialize in different things. Um, to book this, if you're an Adespresso user, you can go to the services tab within Adespresso. If you're not an Ad Espresso user, then you can take out a 14 day free trial and then you can book a session through the Ad Espresso portal. Or like I said, we are gonna be opening this up uh, later on there um, in the quarter. Finally, if you're thinking, okay, I, I get everything, but I need more than a tactical review. I need more than strategy review. I need some real hands-on help here. I need the experts to run it for me. Maybe you're just too busy. Maybe quite understandably, you just don't have time to keep up with all the trends on Facebook. We can help you there with a concierge service. Um, this is not a full service agency. Um, for any agencies out there, don't worry, we don't do um, graphic design and copywriting and landing pages and all that. We're just Facebook geeks. We can run your Facebook campaigns. Well, we've also got some uh, Google Ads geeks as well that can set up your Google Ads there. So for more details on this, um, just go to our tour page there and there's a form that you can fill in, or just reach out to our customer success team. There's a little help button within our Espresso, or if you're not a customer and you don't need to be a customer for the concierge program when you're applying, you can email support at adespresso.com there. So just want to finish up a couple of things. First of all, a shout out to Tori, who did a great job putting together our blog post about this. Um, she's battling the hurricanes in Florida at the moment, so she can join us today on this webinar. And also a big thanks to Massimo for co-hosting. He's going to join us in a second. Um, the final slide here, if you enjoyed this webinar and you want to get really geeky with your Facebook ads, um, we're going to be running a webinar um, in next month, November the 8th, on how to master the Facebook pixel like a pro. Going to go through some great strategies there to really revolutionize your ads by making the most of that pixel. So I hope you all found that useful. Um, thanks for so many of you sticking with us. There's a really good attendance rate and it seems to have grown throughout this webinar. So um, we're gonna get to some of our questions now. Now there's been loads to come in. So just gonna see if Massimo is joining us and then we can go through some of your questions together there. Of course I am. Hello everyone. Hey Massimo. <laughs> hey Paul, great webinar. Thank you. So I can see lots of questions. I don't know if there's any that you managed to look through that um, we, we can go and answer for uh, everybody on this webinar. Yeah, I'll just go backward from the latest to the oldest and, uh, and pick a bunch of them and then let's see how many we can answer. Uh, the first one, it's an easy one. Is there a way to set uh, a start date but allow it to run continuously? Um, yes, you can do this, especially with um, uh, if you use a daily budget for a campaign instead of a lifetime, you can put in the start date and then just say, I want to spend $10 a day or whatever, and it'll keep running until you pause it there. So that's that's definitely the sort of campaigns I mostly run. Most of my campaigns are daily budgets with a start date there. Awesome. And uh, Ben Umid is asking, does your concierge service cover how to run ads in different markets that are not US? 
Yes, um, our team's based all over the world. We've got quite a few people in Europe, but also Singapore, New Zealand, and we cover worldwide. Um, so we cover a range of different industries. And what you'll find is that when we're dealing with so many clients is that you see trends. And OK, you know, sometimes it might be a different product to what we've done before. But by doing that research with ads gallery, info and ads, we discuss as a team. We can do things worldwide. I think we, we cover just about every major continent. We've got active uh, concierge clients at the moment. Awesome. And then Jomar is asking, any suggestion when selling a peer, uh, apparel sorry, slash clothing? Uh, you have a Christian apparel brand. Um, I mean, what I would be doing there is be looking at some of the targeting, which I know has been changing that Facebook have locked down some of the targeting that you could do there. Um, but we just really look for any interest there, anything to do with um, like Christianity. You should find some good interest there. Um, also, I mean, if you're running the US, what I'd also recommend, um, again, we might cover this in, in another training, but go into the audience insights tool within um, within Business Manager, and you can plug in some uh, interest there, and you might find some other things there. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't always have to be directly related. Sometimes there can be little things like um, even political affiliations there. I don't want to get into that too much there, but there's some things that you can use, sometimes lookalike audiences, but really dig into Audience Insights tool. Again, you'll get that from the hamburger icon um, within Business Manager. Um, brew a cup of coffee, spend half an hour doing some research and you'll get some useful interest that you can be targeting there. Awesome. So next question is, in phase one, what are your Facebook objectives compared to phase two? So kind of high level, um, my objectives are going to be um, a, a bit more about engagement in phase one or maybe traffic. So it's kind of four main um, objective types that you get on Facebook, well, optimization types, I should say. Um, you've kind of got pure just reach, you've got engagement on Facebook, you've got traffic, and you've got conversions. So phase one, you're doing a bit more engagement, like there's competitions, um, and also just the ad types you've got there. You might be doing more videos, you might be going for a longer ad text, really highlighting some key points of your brand there. And then phase two, we've done that. We, we just want to keep it blunt. Like we saw with some of the ad examples from Walmart, we might have one line ad text hey, we've got 50% off. The the graphics we're using very blunt. It's just going to reflect the discounts there. So it's really different ad copy that we've got there, but also the objectives are going to move from some engagement and some traffic into just 100% conversion there. Are you still there, Massimo? Yes, uh, but I was muted. Sorry, guys, I have a very bad cold uh, and I'm completely uh, out of my mind, not very lucid right now. Uh, so the other question was, if you're targeting both past purchases, 180 days, and previous website visitors, 180 days, is it more strategic to ex exclude the first audience from the second to prevent overlap? Uh, this this is a, a good question. It really comes down to your audience sizes. So if you get loads and loads of traffic and you've got a big list, then yes, I would run them. I would go and split test those, and you could exclude one from the other. Um, generally, find that my email lists of previous purchasers are the best. Um, but bear in mind, don't split test if you've got very small audiences. Um, I had a coaching call with a client. Uh, this week, they only had 200 on their list. Now, to go and split that up would be insane. So look at your sizes. Now, you could speak to 10 different Facebook experts and get 10 different ideas about sizes. But I, I would say that if they're kind of under 10,000 in total, keep them together. If they're over 10,000, then see how much over, then you might be splitting those up there. And certainly, once you get into the hundreds of thousands, um, I've got some kind of mid-range brands, not like household brands, but mid-size in the US where we might be having 100, 200,000 on our list and probably getting a couple of hundred thousand website visitors in 180 days, then I might be tempted to go and split those out there. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. The next question is from Brian, who's asking when uploading custom audiences, if it's better to upload as many data as possible, like email name, addresses, etc. Or just a single one, they know. 
Oh, this is something I haven't really seen any research on. So I'm going to have to kind of go with my gut feeling here that you're probably going to get more accurate data the more fields that you upload, especially this probably doesn't apply so much to this webinar. But if you're doing business to business, a lot of people aren't going to be using their email addresses on, on business that they use for Facebook. So you could try matching those. Um, but I think the main thing is, I think it's probably not going to make too much difference. Again, it'd be nice to see some research on this, but the main thing is to include that email address. Um, I had a, a client, I think we discussed it this week, they just uploaded phone numbers and, and Facebook just couldn't find a match at all. Most people right. don't have their phone numbers linked on Facebook. So if you've got that email address, that's the main thing. The rest is the icing on the cake. Yeah, totally agree. I think overall, if you have more data, just send them to Facebook. We are not going to hurt in the worst case. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be challenging to test this because now Facebook is not returning the, audience, the sides of custom audiences. So it's very tough to understand if there is a better match rate or not. Absolutely. And like I was showing in the little demo, just um, if, if you are using Facebook to match, make sure it gets it right because it just spots any numbers. That could be a customer ID. And it thinks, hey, that's a phone number. And you know, you, you're probably going to get more damage done by having a false match rather than leaving some fields out. So don't just assume that Facebook is going to match the right fields go through all of them. And like we saw in the example there with some of my clients, they might have 20 fields that they're uploading from their uh, database. And then Facebook is just all over the place with matches. So really spend some time rather than just blindly clicking the buttons there. All right, next next question is, uh, is the audience network worth it, worth using at all when selecting the placements? Oh, um, again, the, well, <laughs> Again, but, but this is where you want to be doing some testing in phase one is don't be testing it in phase two. Now, what I found is that is getting better. And I know Facebook are, I think just this week, they've been announcing some things. They've got an audience network SDK coming out and there's now block lists and all sorts of things. So it's kind of a work in progress. Um, what I would say is that do some testing in phase one. For some of my clients, it works. Sometimes it's absolute garbage. And then also have a look at how things are going in phase two. Um, as we covered, you know, your your real your real restriction to success is just how many people we can reach. So audience network, especially if we're using those warm audiences, um, could be worth throwing in the mix there. I just need to get eyeballs on my ads. Um, maybe if I'm doing cold traffic, I, I, my prospecting campaigns, I wouldn't use it so much, but I do use it for retargeting with those warm audiences there. But yeah, keep an eye on, I, I kind of dip into audience network every so often. It is getting better and better for cold traffic, but not quite there yet. But I reckon the pace that Facebook are changing things by 2019, they'll have it dialed in there. Awesome, thank you, Paul. A uh, couple of quick one and answer directly. No, right now we don't have an affiliate program. Uh, we are thinking about some referral program for customers, but right now there is no actual plan uh, uh, so I cannot give you uh, uh, an ETA uh, for when it will be released. And the other one for those that join later, we are going to send a recording to every one of this webinar. And you can also find it on our YouTube channel tomorrow. And I think we are already over time. Let's see if we have a last one. Uh, Jamar is asking where he can book uh, uh, the campaign review and the coaching call. And maybe Paul, you can go back to a previous slide with the URL. Sure. So, so if I could get my uh, oh, uh, I think we are uh, yes. So let's let's go in for this this URL here. Um. So yes, you can go if you're new to Ad Espresso, then you can go to adespresso.com/tour slash marketing hyphen services, or you'll find that from the, the tour portal. Um, that's going to give you some info saying you can go and book those through Ad Espresso. At the moment, the, the Facebook campaigns have to be created within Ad Espresso. The Google Ads ones, we can do ones created through the Google portal as well. Um, but you basically book those within the app. Um, but we are going to be opening it out to everybody in time. There's a lot of demand for it, but we just got to make sure we can kind of handle that demand and have uh, everything in place first of all. Awesome. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, we have a question about how, where to find the additional resources and data point uh, about the topics that you have, have covered, Paul. I would say our blog is the best place to start, uh, but maybe you have other ones. 
Yeah, I mean, first of all, there's the two handouts there. So there's the Facebook holiday guide, there's the Google holiday guide. Um, if you get it starting with Facebook advertising, then um, if you go to adespresso.com, we have some downloads. We've got some guides. There's a beginner's guide to Facebook advertising. There's a guide, there's like a download as well on custom audiences. And then read all our blog posts. Um, you also on our YouTube channel, we've got previous um, webinars as well there. So those are the main things, you know, we are a bit biased, but we try and cover as much as possible for free there. Um, a little thing as well is there's Ad Espresso University. Um, we do keep some of the good stuff to ourselves for our customers. And if you're an Ad Espresso customer, there's a university tab where we have our latest experiments, a big database of webinars, the ads gallery, and that's where you can book campaign reviews and things like that. Um, so I, I don't want to make this webinar too salesy, but there is a free 14-day trial. And there are some Ad Espresso plans, which I think start from $19, where you can have access to our university. We even have a private Facebook group as well. We've got 6,000 marketers in there. So yeah, that, that's where I'd say we try and cover as much as possible at a very, very realistic cost there. So check us out at adespresso.com. And the last question I think would require another two-hour webinar, but <laughs> let's see if you have some quick answer, Paul. Uh, hello, team. Any tips for new guys uh, struggling with my first sale? It's a very good question, but a very long one to answer. Um, so first of all, just see if you have got any warm audiences that you can use there. Have you already built up a list? Or, or just think about using some of those engagement audiences. So maybe you've got an audience of Facebook fans. You could be targeting those or you could be running a uh, like a simple video campaign or a giveaway, and then you could be retargeting those there. So you start small, and um, something that we cover in some of our other trainings is what I call the magic price point. And as Massimo said, we could discuss this forever, but um, the easiest things to sell on Facebook are around about 30 to $40 or under. It's a one-click purchase. People see the ad, they like it, they click click on the ad, they they put in their PayPal details and they buy. And once you start getting above 40 bucks, especially when you get to 100, $200 above, um, there's a consideration phase and then people will check out your Facebook page, your Instagram, they'll look for reviews, they're gonna go to third party review sites and it starts getting a lot more complicated and you need retargeting funnels and email welcome sequences and chatbots and all that kind of stuff. So what I would say is just be realistic. And um, I know it can't apply to every brand, but if you can, start with the low hanging fruit of 30 to $40 items before you start moving on to the real high ticket items. Right, and uh, the final question is why 30, $40, how about going below that? Um, you can do the, um, and certainly when you're testing, um, the, the reason why I really like that price point is traffic costs a reasonable price, especially if you're in the US. There are countries where it's significantly cheaper, but don't quote me on this, but say we are paying a dollar a click in the US. That this is a, there's a whole ballpark range, but if we're paying a dollar a click, um, say we were then getting a 5% conversion rate, which is quite good on a website there. That means you're paying $20 a conversion. Now, as you can see, that means that, you know, if we're paying $20 a conversion, if you're selling a $10 item, yeah, we can sell loads of items, but we're not going to have enough money there uh, in the system to be able to run ads. So what you find out like $40 is it's low enough to be a one click purchase, but you've got enough profit, hopefully enough margin to be able to go and fund your ads there where you're experimenting. So this is really rough and ready. Don't don't quote me on these figures at all, but you get the idea. You can basically on a piece of paper, do a couple of basic simple calculations and play with the numbers. Work out your cost per click. If you don't know what that is, just put $20 into some ads and get a ballpark figure and work out your expected conversion rate. You know, and, and then work out from there what your CPA, that cost per purchase is going to be. But I've had retailers that just haven't got ads to work because they get sales all day long. But if they're selling it like a $5 ebook on Amazon, there, there just isn't any money from that. At $5 per uh, revenue per sale, you've got to be converting uh, like sales at a rate of around about 50, 60 percent to make any money there from Facebook ads. Awesome, and it looks like that's all for today. Thank you, Paul. It was a terrific webinar, a lot of value for everyone uh, joining, I hope. Thank you, Massimo, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. I hope you found that useful.
Thank you. Bye. Have a good day and look out for the recording or on our YouTube channel, of course.